Today we're speaking with Dr. Avram Spira, Chief of the Division of Computational Biomedicine and Director of the Translational Bioinformatics Program at the Clinical and Translational Science Institute of Boston University. He is also a board member of Cancer Prevention Research, a journal of the AACR. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Spira. Thank you for having me. Your talk was identifying the smoker at risk for lung cancer. How does smoking affect intra- and extrathoracic airway epithelial cell gene expression, what you call a molecular field of injury? I think the molecular field of injury is a really simple but powerful concept. And the idea is in individuals who smoke, the epithelial cells that line the entire respiratory tract, from your nose and mouth, down through your airway, all the way out to your lung, are affected at a genomic level by the exposure. You can imagine these cells are being bathed in all the toxins that are being inhaled through the mouth and nose, and so they have enormous changes that occur at a genomic level due to that exposure. We also, though, believe that different individuals have a heterogeneity or different response in terms of the genomic damage that occurs in their cells with the same exposure, and that we can use these cells as almost a canary in the coal mine to tell us how that individual is responding, either appropriately or not appropriately to the toxin, and whether they're at risk for getting lung cancer. And I think that's where there's a real power behind the, uh, uh, the principle. What is the potential to identify a non-invasive genomic biomarker that can identify smokers who are at high risk for developing lung cancer? I think there's enormous potential to use this field of injury concept to try to develop non-invasive biomarkers of smoking-related lung cancer risk. Uh, the idea here is we could take cells that line the airways that we can collect at bronchoscopy, profile the genomic damage that's occurring within smokers, and essentially say, are you heading towards lung cancer or not? And a couple of years ago, our group showed a proof of principle study where if you take those cells and individuals who have abnormalities on their CT scans or x-rays of the chest that are suggestive of lung cancer, and you take the cells in the airway and profile the genomic damage that's occurred, you can have a very sensitive and specific biomarker of who has lung cancer and who doesn't. And it's clinically relevant because these patients are a challenge for us diagnostically. Who do we need to send to surgery and who we don't need to send to surgery? And so I think that type of non-invasive biomarker uh, will be developed very shortly. How could this information be used to develop personalized genomic approaches to lung cancer, chemoprophylaxis, and therapy? So beyond just diagnosing lung cancer, which, as I said, we've been able to do with the bronchial airway cells, we think these cells can also tell us which specific pathways in the cell have been altered by smoking, and therefore, potentially, which drugs or which preventive agents can be used to reverse that genomic damage. So in a paper that we published earlier this year as a pilot study, we showed that in most smokers who get lung cancer have alterations in a specific oncogenic signaling pathway in these cells called PI3 kinase, and that we could reverse that signature in those cells using a compound that's relatively non-toxic, something called myo-inositol. And that if we do that, we were able to cause regression of pre-malignant changes in these individuals. So they didn't yet have lung cancer, they were on their way to getting lung cancer, and this drug could actually reverse the changes in those people who had this signature. How can this information be applied to large-scale population studies? I think if we're going to get to large-scale studies, we've got to move out of the bronchial airway to a less invasive site. As I said earlier, we believe that the field of injury concept applies not only to the bronchial airway epithelial cells, but actually to the cells that line your nose and mouth. They're also exposed to cigarette smoke. They also have genomic damage. And we've actually shown in a paper this year that the nasal epithelial cell changes at the genomic level with smoking reflect or can be a surrogate for the changes that you see in the bronchial airway. And therefore, we're hoping that we can move the biomarker work that we've developed in the bronchial airway for lung cancer to the less invasive sites of both the nose and mouth. And we think that'll be the way towards a mass screening tool for lung cancer. Dr. Spira, thank you so much. Thank you.